At the turn of the 19th century, people who owned cars could virtually be counted on your fingers. The emerging technologies that provided motive power for these new fangled, horseless carriages wasn't just making cars very expensive, but was also creating a weird sense of fear. There were many pundits saying that the car was just a passing gimmick. Even when Henry Ford had succeeded in making motoring affordable to the masses with his factory line produced Model T, the general mood at the time was that these machines were just rich people's playthings. Just as in the 1970s hardly anybody thought that computers could ever be used in the home. In the early part of the 20th century, cars were only seen as for men to get around their land quickly and for toffs keen to show off their new position. After all, people in this time often were born, lived and died in the same area. It was rare to travel long distances for business or for pleasure. So now the car could actually offer this, car companies had a big job to do in order to overcome a big mental block from their future customers. These days, of course, we think nothing of travelling up and down the country just for a weekend getaway or using our cars regularly for long distance business use. The car has given us incredible amounts of freedom, which we now merely take for granted. So what's the next big step for personal transportation? For Citroen, a school of thought has led them to the conclusion, probably reached just by looking out of the window of their Paris office, that cities these days give motorists too much personal freedom. Clogged with cars with mostly one person in, cities are now definitely not car friendly. So after a series of brainstorming meetings and lots of packets of strong French fags, they came up with this bizarre concept car. Now what we're looking at here isn't necessarily what the actual car may look like, it's the system that's the concept here. They've taken computer logistics systems to the limit, so we've got the best route planning and navigation systems on the planet. Tie in with this a way to sense who's on board a car, how long they're in a car, and a way of getting money out of their bank accounts, and you have the Citroen Osmos. From this, this concept, we, we start to explore the technology by wire. And uh, in fact, from that, we, uh, we, 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 we have now this technology on all of our concept car. It's something we'd like to develop a lot because it's, uh, it's, it's bring a lot of security, a lot of freedom for designer, you know, to don't get uh, any uh, mechanic connection to, uh, to the mechanics. So it's, it's bring a lot of freedom to the designers. Why have a car that you struggle through jams with, then leave parked up all day in some dodgy multi-story which costs you a fortune? Why not let others drive your car around and pay you for the privilege? You'd have programmed in when you next need it, or if you need it earlier, you'd be able to call it by remote control. You could even tell your car not to hire itself to other people in certain time periods. And of course your precious car will always tell you where it is at any moment. What's more, if a car has a spare seat or two, other people on the streets could have sensors to tell them if a car's coming along which is going their way. And once they get a lift, more cash goes to you, the car owner. Well, I'm sure by now you're compiling a mental list of the pros and cons of this Alice in Wonderland system, so let us attempt to read your mind. On the plus side, something like this is desperately needed in the clogged cities to rid them of selfish drivers. Your astronomical parking bill can be much reduced or even eradicated thanks to other folk using your car around town. On the disadvantage side, our cars are personal things. Would we really want strangers picking their noses in our cars and leaving gum under the seat? What if you suddenly changed plans and you needed your car urgently? What if the last borrower of the day happened to park it way over the other side of town? If you found a dent in it, how would you find out which of the borrowers had actually pranged it? Systems can be abused anyway. This would be a security nightmare. In any case, what's wrong with using good old taxis and buses? Did nobody in the brainstorm sessions think of that?